Our next story is about Israel's most high-profile casualty in the Gaza war. Idana Mehdi, an Israeli singer, songwriter and actor famous for starring in Netflix's iconic show Father. According to reports, Mehdi has been seriously injured in Gaza Strip's Khan Yunus city. He was fighting there as an Israeli Defense Force reservist. That is when he suffered injuries in an attack. And last we checked, he had been airlifted to a hospital and was receiving treatment. Reports from the Israeli media have also cited Amedi's father, who has confirmed the injury. Amedi's cousin also wrote about the injury on Instagram and prayed for his speedy recovery. Now, for the unworst, the 35-year-old actor was born and brought up in Jerusalem. He's currently serving as a real-life IDF reservist in the Combat Engineering Corps. On the 12th of October, five days after Hamas launched that brutal attack, Ahmedi was a one among thousands of reservists who joined the war. He said he did, did so to protect the children, families and homes of his fellow Israelis. Interestingly, Ahmedi is not the only one currently serving in the IDF. There are a host of other renowned Israelis who have joined Israel's reserve forces. And this includes the likes of social media influencer and journalist Hananya Naftali, former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, and father actor Lior Raz, besides several Israeli citizens living abroad. They are all fighting this war, which has entered day 94. It's been a total of 94 days since this war has started. What's the latest from on the ground? Well, besides the fighting, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is touring the region for a week of shuttle diplomacy. Have a look at these visuals. They are from Saudi Arabia. Speaking to reporters from the tarmac as he departed the sheikhdom, Blinken said that leaders across West Asia are determined to prevent a wider conflict. Listen to this. Everywhere I went, I found leaders who were determined to prevent the conflict that we're facing now from spreading, um, doing everything possible to deter escalation, uh, to prevent a widening uh, of the conflict. The future of the region needs to be one of integration, not division and not conflict. And fourth, for that to happen, we need to see the establishment of an independent Palestinian state. Now, no one I talk to thinks any of this will be easy. Um, all recognize the, uh, the hurdles and no one thinks that anything will happen overnight. But we agreed to work together. And from Saudi Arabia, Blinken left for Israel. He landed in Tel Aviv last night following multiple stops in West Asia. He was welcomed by the U.S. ambassador to Israel. His first meeting was with Israel's president. And during that meeting, Herzog spoke about a lawsuit filed at the ICJ accusing Israel of genocide against Palestinians. The lawsuit in question has been brought by South Africa and will be subjected to hearings this week. Herzog called the lawsuit atrocious and preposterous. On Thursday, a proceeding will start in the International Court of Justice in The Hague, whereby the South Africa has sued Israel for supposedly genocide. There's nothing more atrocious and preposterous than this claim. Actually, our enemies, the Hamas, in their charter, call for the destruction and annihilation of the state of Israel, the only nation state of the Jewish people. And lastly, Blinken also met with the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Tel Aviv for talks over the war in Gaza. Details of what transpired during the meeting are yet to emerge. Meanwhile, back in Washington, D.C., U.S. President Joe Biden has issued a statement. He says he is working with Israel to reduce the presence of the IDF in Gaza. He said this during a church event in South Carolina. And during that event, Biden's speech was interrupted by a handful of protesters calling for a ceasefire. Responding to the protesters, Biden said, and I'm quoting, I understand their passion and I have been quietly working with the Israeli government to get them to reduce and significantly get out of Gaza using all I can to do. But Biden's statement does not really match the reality on the ground. According to reports, forget dying down, the war is only expanding, especially along the Israel-Lebanon border. 
In fact, things are so bad that Biden has dispatched his top aides to West Asia to prevent a full-blown war from erupting between Israel and Hezbollah. You see, U.S. officials are concerned that Netanyahu may see an expanded fight in Lebanon as key to his political survival. Will he do so? Will he really try to expand this war? Well, if Israel's American allies think so, then there must be some merit in the claims. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.